So let's uh, now look at a, a slight variation on this. We've got the same objects uh, in the sequence diagram again. And the same, the same thing happens here. Finger touches the screen, an event is created. We're entering into the event loop, so a new auto-release pool is created. The event gets passed into your view controller. Your view controller allocs a new object, so it's retaining out as one. But then the view controller uh, passes auto-release, and then in ad additionally, it passes retain to that object. So when we alloc the object, we had a release count of one. When we passed auto-release, we still have a release count of one. But then additionally, we retain, so the, aut so the retain count has gone up to two. When your view controller has finished and it's returning back, the auto release pool gets emptied, so that causes the release message to be sent to the green object here. But this time the retain count was two, so releasing it causes the retain count to go down to one. Because the retain count has not reached zero, that green object does not get deleted from memory, it sticks around. And then as we return out of the event loop, the last thing that happens is the screen gets updated. Well, in this case, the uh, redrawing the screen needed that object, needed to refer to the object. Uh, perhaps that object itself is a is a uh, is a view object, like a, um, a UI label. So it needs to draw itself on the screen. So that's why we needed to keep that object around as we exited out of the event cycle. Now, in this sequence, because the object was retained up here by your view controller, that means that there'll be some other code somewhere else which will manually release that ob object again so that eventually it can get deleted from memory. And a, a very common uh, place for that to happen would be in the uh, dialog method of, uh, of your view controller object.